It's the local segment. <laughs> it's the local segment. Brought to you, you, say, you. You said no local hours. So it's no, no local, local hours today because we running pretty overtime. And it's a local segment provided to you by Tim Skillen's retirement party. Uh, here on I'm not going to hold you. Um, we have not talked about the Chicago Bears mm. uh, with, with Mikey and, and Dante because um, of what happened over the week. Or you got scheduling everything like that. Um, before we get into this week's game, Mikey, Dante, how are y'all feeling after the aftermath of Thursday game coming into this week against the uh, Minnesota Vikings? Uh it's cool. Uh, I ain't, I'm not going to get too high, too low. I do like what I'm seeing from Justin, and I would like to see that continue because I think he can play his way into – well, I should say play his way out of this ridiculous scenario that we've been, you know, talking about all year. I understand everything that Kalen Williams possesses and, you know, the possibilities that, you know, are there if he, we do get that number one pick. But at the same time, the Chicago Bears, as it currently stands, you're much better off with Justin figuring this shit out and do you using that capital – to build around him because the haul you can get for that Carolina pick, if it does become number one, is Man. is is Willie White shoes type of shit. Like it's it's just franchise changing. So I think as far as the last few weeks, I got I loved it. Like I said, we knew the Commanders were the Commanders. We expected them to play well. We didn't expect a forty ball. And so even even though most of those went to DJ Moore, I'm perfectly fine with that because that's one thing that we said. That's why you go get a number one. Everybody's saying, oh, all he did was say, hey, fuck it, DJ Moore down this. Yeah, that's what I pay him for, like shit like mm-hmm. that, to go do it. So for me, um, I'm not going to get too high, too low because we know how the Bears are. But, I mean, uh, Flus did look better calling the defense. Uh, the linebackers looked better. Um, so this week, with, well, we're going to get into that later. But as far as the the last couple of weeks, I'm I'm, I'm – I'm, Impressed with Justin. I'm, I'm glad he seems to be loosening up. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm still upset about that loss to Denver. Um, As you should. Because, you know, that was, that's another, because we want to see growth in Justin Fields, but we also want to see growth for the for the team. We want to see wins, you know. They need to learn how to win. They need to learn how to close out games. Last week against the Commanders, they learned how to close out that game. It got, shit got, uh, shit got tricky in the end, but, um, I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Justin. I'm loving what I'm seeing out of the offense. It looks much cleaner. It's, it's kind of like how we have been saying in the episodes before. And, you know, every time we've spoken on the Bears offense, it seems like they were treating September as preseason. Um, I think we're finally starting to see what the offense could be. And there's more room for growth, like for growth. Like, let's not mistake it. Just uh, let's, you know, Justin left some throws out there on that field last week. He could have had about six TDs. DJ Moore could have had about another one and maybe another 60 yards. Darnell Mooney could have got in on the action. So, um, you know, I think I think last week showed you they haven't given up on Flus as far as the players. They play hard for him, especially on defense. Um, and, you know, now we just need to keep seeing seeing that growth from Justin. And, and maybe, you know, right now this is a, a very, very critical stretch for the Bears. You have the Vikings which is a winnable game. You got the Raiders, which is a winnable game. And then, you know, you got the Chargers. You got three games before the trade deadline. You need to know whether you are buyers now for next year or whether it's time to maybe sell off on some of the guys from the old regime that you have no intention of, you know, bringing back. And I'm looking at Jalen Johnson and Eddie Jackson. Well, it's funny that you say that because, you know, I was scrolling while we was doing the show and you know you know i guess like the rumors is is that while they're not making flat out calls that the bears are entertaining offers trade offers for eddie jackson and jalen johnson jalen johnson is in the last year of his career and eddie ain't been the same but that's just, just a new report or yeah well guess- no yeah yeah it came out that courtney cronin was saying yeah. that you know that they are gauging interest um, and you know, these next couple of weeks could determine whether they'd be buyers or not. I mean, it doesn't even really need to be a report. Let's just look at it what it is. Jalen Johnson's up for an extension. They yeah. did not offer him shit, you know, like they didn't offer. It. And yes, he's great in coverage, but one interception in however many years he's playing is not going to cut it. Eddie Jackson yeah. is about two months away from being on the wrong side of 30. You know what I'm yeah. saying? With, with foot injury. So like what Bang was saying, you know, it's, it's out there and these, these next couple games would determine whether they're worth keeping or if we see a sell-off. And we know Ryan Pose has no problem selling off. He did it last year. 
what the thing is is I think this is gonna happen whether they 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 grow it, they get it or not. See, the thing is, is that I look, Tyreek Stevenson fits better in a man type of offense, me defense, right? But he's been growing in you know in in the position. I think to um, what Terrell Smith has also grown during the time where folks has helped, um, has been um, injured. And then Kyler coming back this game. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. But I think with those two, you do still have a good opportunity to get some 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 capital back, right? Um, and then plus that defense stinks anyway. So it really don't mm-hmm. even matter. Like the defense is terrible. It is piss poor. And, and really, if anything, we need to be having a conversation around that defensive line and if we could get some, you know, whether it is during free agency, whether it's through the draft, you know, hopefully get some dogs there. But that's not going to happen until the end of this, I mean, till next season. You know, with that being yeah. said, though, you know, I don't think letting those two go hurts the team. I think it helps it long term. But looking at these, the schedule, the next couple of games, you know what I'm saying? And we had talked about this um, on some dude. I'm not going to get I'm not going to get heavily optimistic. What I will say is that it it's possible that at least we're not talking about the number one pick being us. My hot take is I believe that the New York Giants are gonna end up with the number one pick in the draft. I think they're about to hit them with the Patrick Ewan package. So the tank is in. The league probably didn't told they asked the tank. We need Caleb in a big market. We don't need him in Chicago either because they're going to be good with Justin. We don't need his ass in Arizona. Y'all niggas need to suck for the rest of the year. Um, but we do look at the Carolina Panthers, what they got going on. So, I mean, hey, I, I'm i probably more optimistic as a Bears fan due to more trades and possibly – the Carolina Panthers being shitty um, enough to for me to say, you know, that I could I would be good for them to have a nice little bit of a streak. Panthers lose. Best case scenario, and I'll still be happy. <laughs> yeah, I'll say this much. I think um, as a Bears fan, we've been in this situation many times where like they'll win a game and you know and things go well for the team for the quarterback, whoever, and the fan base gets excited. And then that's screw the fucking pooch. Uh, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get too high. I'm not going to get too low. I do think it makes the rest of the season interesting because I'm still looking at Justin's play more than I am wins. I think that in the situation that we see with the potential to, uh, you know, top two picks is that if the bears are there at the number one pick and, they don't have – and Justin has been either shaky or he's been good, but he hasn't been great. I think it's a no-brainer. They're going to go with Caleb Williams. I think the best um, thing for me, what I personally want, I want Justin to play well, and I want the Bears to play – you know, to get a couple wins. Maybe they finish in, like, you know, three or four or some shit. May, and, you know, Panthers, at the worst, I think are going to be the number two pick. So you still get you a chance to go out there and get you – a Marvin Harrison Jr., maybe one of those defensive ends out there who you can add to the team. But as far as the team moving in the right direction, I think these next five games are going to tell us. I think as these next five games are as uh, close to winnable as, as possible. You know what I'm saying? I think if you look at um, the Vikings, the Vikings are going to be without um, – they're going to be without a Jefferson, Justin Jefferson. Jefferson, Jefferson. Jefferson's on the IR. I know that Jordan Addison will be playing, but he's not a hundred percent. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's going to be something yeah, that's going to be big for him. No. Yeah. yeah and, I, I, and I agree with you. And uh, you can see if Justin plays this way, right. We know the defense is shit, but if the offense is going this way, you can talk yourself into a team that's one and four right now. That's, Sliding into maybe seven wins, you know. I mean, I, seven will be crazy. I think they would have to really well, you, think about it. You, if you beat the Vikings, you could beat the Raiders. The Chargers game, I'll give it an L. The Saints game, I'll give it an L. Right. So what are you at? Three, three wins, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Panthers, Win. that's a W. Cardinals should be a W. Win. You got to toss up against the Falcons, right? Now that Packers game, that rematch, that shit ain't happening what happened in week one. That could be a W. And who's to say the next time you face the Vikings, if you go ahead and send them to one and five, and then next week they play, I believe, the Niners, they'd be at one and six. Kirk Cousins gone, you know what I'm saying? And they in the Caleb Williams talk. So the, the Bears need to just, like you said, they can't screw the pooch and they can't get a, you know, we won one game. We ain't, haven't done shit. But if the offense could keep building that positive momentum and Justin could keep doing what he's doing, they could kind of, you know, s- string along some wins here. So it's like, okay, do you buy now on Chase Young? You know what I'm saying? And get him in here now and, and have him for next year, like Bang was saying, because you gotta you gotta start going for that uh for the D line. And and at the end of the day, I don't care what it is. If Justin keeps playing this way, the only person I want is Marvin Harrison Jr. You can send yep. Caleb Williams and his painted fucking nails wherever the fuck he wants, wherever the fuck Roger Goodell wants his ass. If his ass wants him in Tampa, send him there. I don't give a fuck. But if Justin keeps playing this way, the quickest way to success is with Justin Fields. The eyes, Chico. The eyes. I see it. Eyes, Sunday. <laughs> he's starting to do what he's supposed to be doing. And if he keeps going, then why, what's the point of restarting? Yeah, I'm with you, too. And I also feel like it sends a bad message to the fan base that if Justin plays well enough to keep him. And, and I think we talked about this, too, uh, Mikey. Like, you don't have to pay Justin right away. Like, you can uh, you can let that fifth year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can let that, that. Yeah, you can let that four and five years play out. Then you can franchise tag. him. like, there's a lot you can do. And if Justin plays well enough to prove to you he can be the starter of this team, why? I know you want to reset the contract, but why bring a rookie? And it's going to take another three years maybe for you to get what you want him to get. And at that point, you're wasting more time in a division that I know Detroit's good, but they got to make a decision on Jared Goff coming up. There's no there's no team in there that's just going to be dominant long term. This is a perfect time for you to build right now. I'll do you one better. Fuck the fan base. What's the message that that sends to the players around the locker league? Room. Because yeah. not 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 only not only the locker room, Justin Fields is respected and motherfuckers fuck with him around the league because they know last year he was set up to fail and he was still a problem. This year, now we're starting to see what, what he could do with DJ Moore. What if Justin Fields finishes with even 30? Just give me 30 TDs. 36, Which will be a Chicago Bears record. Right. He's going to shatter all that shit. How can you, after, you know, him show you everything you wanted, you wanted to see, ship him out? What's that What's that say about the Bears as a franchise? What's that say about how they treat their players? You know what I'm saying? And especially somebody as young and dynamic and respected around the league by his peers as Justin Fields. I, I agree. I, I will say this. It's all just depending on if Caleb Williams and the Bears match up when it comes to picks. I don't think anybody would be upset at the Bears for grabbing quite possibly the greatest, one of the greatest prospects in the history of this sport. It's a lottery ticket at the end of the day, though. That's not no, saying no, no, he's I, oh, going, you know what I'm saying? No, I, oh, yeah. it, it, everybody is a lottery ticket. Shit, Brock Purdy is the last fucking pick in the draft, and right. we having conversations if this motherfucker's a lead or not. What I'm saying is, is that what I hope is that the Bears win and the Panthers win a couple. I do believe the fix is in with the Giants, though. Ah, you can't tell me that Roger Goodell ain't say, look, he out? His neck hurt, Daniel. Oh, we got to get y'all the number one pick. We need that man in. We New need York. that market. We need that market. We need that man. But in you New know York. the Giants probably gonna win a couple games. I don't think oh, no. they're they, gonna they're be schedule, out for the rest their of schedule. Their schedule looks like they got some winnable games. They I mean, got yeah, some well, winnable. and they got some games that they should get fucking boned. But and let's be real, Tyrod can win a couple games. Just. Nah, 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 nah. Tyrod got Drea. Ty, Tyrod got Drea. That's his only win. All right, let's be real. Who got Drea? Tyrod 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 was up in there. It's his turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nigga, no. I think they he, I think he can get you one win. He can get you one win. But yeah, I, I, I still think the fix is in, man, because you, you need that man to go somewhere else. But then nah, with that being said though, I mean look, I don't need the Carolina Panthers to have the number one pick in the draft. Simple as that. I don't want to be in the position to have to, I'm with you. to, have to make that I'm decision. With you. Yeah, but take, take it out, take it out of their hands. Take it out of Ryan Poe's hands. Take it out of Ryan Poe's hands. I'll tell you this, man. 
for you to want them to get a win, I know it's going to – and this is not that I don't believe in Bryce. I think Bryce is going to be a really good quarterback, and I don't like how he's being killed right now because the, the Panthers did not set him all – set him up for this year at all. At but all. if you want them to win a game, you're probably going to need Andy Dalton to start. Like, if you want them to win a game or two, honestly. Because I don't think Bryce is going to be able to get them a win. Uh, and if maybe should, – should the, Bear, the Bears – the Bears might give them that win. because it's the Hey, you can have it. Hey, dead ass, you can have it. Like, the way I feel right now <laughs> – if Justin balls out and looks good before that pack that Panthers game, hey man, just have a mysterious hamstring injury. Just have <laughs> one. I don't. i look. I don't want to be in that position. Because, I'm with you 100%. Because if yeah. if I was in that position, where the Bears have the number one pick in the draft, I can't say, no matter what Justin does this year, that I won't draft Caleb Williams. And trade yeah. Justin to get capital. I can't do it because and then it also you got to think about the monetary thing. It resets. It resets your whole salary thing. I don't want to be in that position. And I don't think that's something that's even envious. Because the league gonna be looking at you like, all right, motherfucker, what you gonna do? Right. And I don't want that for the Bears, man. I, for some people it might feel good, but if if Justin is showing us that he's the man. But you got the man that will probably been the number one pick in the NFL draft for the past two, three seasons. That's 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 the shit that lead the ulcers. We're gonna have know. to have another. We're gonna have to have another another show, another set segment on the, in the future, and just discuss this whole Caleb Williams hype and and what they see in you know projection versus reality. Because there's a lot of shit that Caleb does that. You know smelly. that our court, that yeah, that smelly that our court current quarterback does, and we kill him for. You know, not yeah. to mention he's about four or five inches, four inches shorter than Justin. He's not he's as, shorter than Justin. He's five, he's five eleven. eleven. And he's Justin, five eleven. He's five oh, eleven. Six Justin, foot. Justin's not six something. He's what, what, just like, like six, six three, like six three. Justin's probably. not six like three, six bro. One, six two. Justin's not Wikipedia line. That nigga might be six feet. Justin ain't no six three. Ain't no that way. Nigga, gee, bro, that nigga's not six three, bro. And he's maybe got an inch off my brother. That nigga's not six three, bro. And your your brother like six. Your brother taller than me. Your brother like six feet, maybe. B, six gee, feet, I'm right. six foot. I'm five eleven, six foot. And he just went to the doctor today, so you know he ain't lying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, maybe, maybe I'm nigga, under I am, my Nigga, type. I am six even, 316. And I am a defensive me. tackle, and Joe taller than me. Okay. That's right. just right. Justin. And if he over, he just about 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, you look at Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams is in that Drew Brees body built. You know what I'm saying? Like C- Caleb Williams is Drew, is Drew, um, is, is Bryce. With but, a little thicker, a little but thicker. Pause. Pause. You right? Damn, that's crazy. Damn. That was crazy. Damn. 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 I think I think um, I just heard my girl. I think I just heard my girl say, "No homo." <laughs> but yeah, uh, I just don't want to be. I just don't want to be in that position though. Yeah, I'm with you. I I I'm 100 on that too, man. I think that um when you uh <laughs> when you look at Justin, how, what's what's your confidence level? Um, on the fact, I'm not saying he's gonna ball out like he has the last two weeks. I mean, eight touchdowns in two weeks is crazy. What's y'all confidence level that he can at least be out give you like maybe a, a 250 yard plus, at least two touchdowns passing a game, and more than anything, just look as confident in this look. You know, he's been getting the ball out quicker. Sunday, I'm confident. Sunday, I'm confident. Not just Sunday, but for the entire season. No, no, no. no. Sunday, I'm confident. On no, that's what I'm saying. Like, Sun- Sun- Sunday, I'm confident. And if everything goes well on Sunday, I'm confident for the rest of the season because the one thing that irritated me about the Bears, the one thing that irritated me about the Bears is simple. They didn't play this man during the preseason like that. And mm-hmm. Justin, Justin, I said it last year, he's one of those quarterbacks that has to get in the rhythm and yeah. continue that rhythm. Once you get him out the rhythm, it's it. All right, you're going to have to start that shit all over again. I think game three, he's in the rhythm. And then that gives me hope for the rest of the season with the teams that you're playing against, including the Chargers. Yeah, I I, I agree. I mean, I I'm confident, and, and kind of how Banks said, like I'm confident if he does it Sunday. It's also what Luke Getzey does. You know what I'm saying? Because they have a yeah. propensity to fucking do some crazy shit, start tweaking, and we watching the game like, wait, what what happened? You know, like taking the ball out of his hands, but. 
Um, I think just like just a little shit, like I said last week, just watching the game, he looks different. If it's not there, he's not taking them sacks. Yeah, he was sacked last week, right? Uh, a couple times. But they were just sacks that, you know, that they were cover sacks. They were just, hey, the, 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 the O-line got beat. In the Chiefs game, in the game against the Packers, and the, the game definitely against the Bucks, he was just deer in headlights. You know, some of them were on him. So we're starting to see just even the growth there. So um, I just want to keep seeing it in the passing game. I want to keep seeing it. You know, uh, Khalil Herbert was put on the IR, so it's for sure he's out. Hey, man, the next hey, St. Brown. Yeah, the yeah wrong and, Brown. And, and, and the wrong St. Brown. And that might low-key be big. That's because low-key he, a, you know, a big, yeah, a big loss right there. It's, yeah. yeah, you know, but the, if they got Tanya now, they run a little bit more 12 personnel. But I think Justin Cabal loud and, you know, just speaking to uh, – we just off topic with about the contract thing what's to say they don't just come to Justin? I, do you if watching justin field do you he don't deserve no patrick mahomes joe burrow Jalen hurts money no, but he still know. but he could still get paid and it still f- helps the bears gino just got three for 105. they could still come up with something that doesn't completely break the bank and still build for the future you know what i'm saying so oh that's cool that's just not gonna come until after that um that's probably gonna come when they franchise the nigga. No, but yeah. that's what I yeah, and that's what I was saying. Like in the group chat, they got plenty. They the only decision they gotta make at the end of this year is do we pick up the fifth year option or not? If they pick it up and they don't pass on and they pass on Caleb, then cool, Justin Shore for another year. If he just balls out ridiculously, kind of like how we've seen the last two games consistently for a whole season, then you're gonna talk into a contract extension. If not, if he gets hurt, you can franchise him. You know, like they they don't got to, like, there's a, the fans are like, oh, all these quarterbacks are resetting the market. Justin Fields ain't going to reset the market. But if he keeps hooping, he's going to get paid. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I think the thing that with, with Justin, like you said, he's not he's not Mahomes, Burrow, or even Allen as far as, like, you're going to get cashed the fuck out right away. And I'm not saying that he can't be that guy. I just don't think that right now and I, I feel like for him to get to that he'd have to like ball out of control like for the rest of the year my confidence level actually i give it to dante my fault dante go what, what's your confidence level on on, on on justin playing well uh much like anything with the chicago bears they don't exist i mean <laughs> one one thousand percent wait and see mode i'm sitting here loving everything i'm hearing and I, I love the enthusiasm and i agree it does look that way but at this point as far as just sheer confidence uh I, i've been waiting to see mo bro with everything like i agree the vikings game this sunday he, he has no reason to not perform in a similar manner to how he has the last few weeks i ain't saying he gonna go for four touchdowns but he's gonna have like you said the 250 two touchdowns look competent running the offense i believe in that but um there's so many other factors that play into it that's why like i know justin's gonna do his part but it's gets he gonna shit the bed and start making terrible play calls again. Because, again, these last two weeks have been some of the best play calling we've seen from him Yeah, on, on the offensive side of the ball. So, with it being so many factors, I can't just say I'm confident in Justin. Because he can do all the right work in the world, and then they go out there and fuck him over. You feel me? So... Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I gotta say, bro. Whatever, like, like everything else with the Bears, I'm just, I'm just waiting to see right now, G. I, I gotta. Yeah. Um, I ain't setting myself up for failure again. I'm with y'all. I'm with y'all <laughs> on that one. I think that I, I have faith in Justin. Um, I want to see it consistently because even last year, when he went crazy for like six weeks, like there was like a period after them six games where he wasn't doing shit. Like, and I feel like we've been so used to him scoring 30 points a game for like a month and a half that I don't think really people talked about it the way you're like, this nigga's not really doing shit. So I want to see him. He got what we got. I want And two, I want to see him actually, it's more about how he looks more than the actual numbers in my in my personal opinion um from him and i feel um yeah everybody keep talking about my audio i got me i got about me it was mic- you back though okay yeah, I, you I, back I, now. I yeah you back i now. think i know what it is like this this microphone might be dying low-key because remember bang when we tried to do summer sessions you said something like i was underwater yep that's how it sounds that's how it sounds yeah i think i think it's i, I gotta give me a new this a new microphone so anyway yeah 
Um, anytime I look at the private chat, I know it's something about my audio. But we're gonna <laughs> it'll be taken care of. Your ass, time. your ass was wild. <laughs> 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 what part it sounded did it like school? Charlie Brown? Sounded like Charlie yeah, Brown. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, what part did it start on this? I know what it would have picked off it. Oh man, keep going, keep going. You good? Okay. Now what I was just saying was, is I'm, I'm, I'm I have a. There's optimism there, but I gotta see it, and that's how we get into this this game for this week against the the Vikings. Uh, Mikey, do you have the odds for this week? Like, who's are the yeah. Vikings the favorite? Yeah, the Vikings are favored. Depending where you shop, it's basically a field goal game. They're favored by like two and a half, three. Um, they were originally favored by three with Justin Jefferson, so it really didn't drop at all. Um, yeah, so the the Bears are once again a, a underdog and. I, you know that's that's Vegas. The Bears, the Bears have not sh- shown shit over the last couple of years that they cover the number. You know what I'm saying? So uh, they gonna have to uh, they gonna have to just basically play as you know as home underdogs again. And they have a, a a pretty good record at home against the Vikings over the last couple of years. Definitely. Um, I'm for this game, man. I I want to pick the Bears. I really want to. I'm not going to, um, because this this feels yeah. like a. a a peak bears trap game trap game yeah it just it just feels like it, like you got justin jefferson who's on ir you got jordan addison you know he's gonna play but he's been having like a little hamstring issue this week the bears have all this feel good mojo coming into this week you know of uh, even though they lost against the broncos he's putting up points these last two weeks justin's looking good it's gonna be a raucous crowd on sunday uh, i won't be there but it's gonna be a raucous crowd and i just i've been a bears fan too long like dante said when it feels too right, it usually is. So I'm going to go with the Minnesota Vikings this week. I'm, it's going to be a very, very close game. I'm going to take the Vikings. Um, I'm going to say 34 to 27 because I do believe the Bears are going to put up points. But I think that the this defense is just going to find a way to fuck it up in the end. But I think Justin will have a good game. But I'm going to say Vikings 30, 34 to 27 on Sunday. Man, I got the Bears by 14. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got the Bears by 14. Um, I I think this is – and they're at home too. Yeah. They're going to score over 30 again. Not saying that Not saying that Minnesota ain't going to score. But I think the Bears going to get them by 14. They're going to take over in the fourth quarter. And then we're going to go ahead and get it. So, bear down. No, I think um, – no, Justin Jefferson – I'm going to go Bears 24, Minnesota 17. Um, I think, you know, it's going to be a good game. Like I said, this week I do think Justin will be able to do a little little more uh what he did last week. I ain't go, like I said, not four touchdowns, probably two touchdowns, maybe one and one, run for one, throw for one. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go, uh, like I said, Bears. Yeah, I'm riding with the Bears. I see another game where the offense will be able to move the ball. Um, I'm looking at 28-24. Bears, um, you know, offensively they have been able to move the ball on the Vikings. Baker Mayfield went out there, put up some some points on them. Like I said, the the Vikings are allowing opposing quarterbacks to average about 280 yards passing the last three games. So I think there's room for Justin. You know, and you go their secondary is nothing special. So I think there's room for Justin to have another one of those games. The offense had one of those games. Um, big Dante Foreman game, you know, no Roshan Johnson, no Khalil Herbert, no Travis Homer. So, you know, run the ball. We're going to run the ball off play action. And I think the Bears will be able to find the way and get the two and four. And, you know, we, we go from there. But I like the, I like the Bears in this game. Um, I was on record not being high on the Vikings, even with Justin Jefferson being healthy. I'm definitely not high on them now. You know, you got to – even though that they're coming back from injury, you still got the uh, a secondary with uh, Jalen Johnson, Eddie Jackson, Kyler Gordon to be back. You know, so you know, you just got to contain T.J. Hawkinson because we know that's who Kirk Cousins is going to really try to feed um, this game. But uh, I'm 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 liking the Bears this week, and you know we'll see. <laughs> I really hope I'm wrong. I would love nothing more to be wrong, not just as a Bears fan, but as a member of the Bears media. I want to have, I want some entry covering the rest of the season. You know, if I'm going to be going away to all these cold weather cities, I want to be on for a fucking reason. So I do hope that I'm wrong <laughs> about Sunday. I do hope that the Bears uh, pull this out, man. So that's going to uh, really conclude everything. I'm going to uh, 
kick this off or end this off with my goofy mug of the week, man, before Dante gets us up out of here. Um, gonna give this to Elena Russo and just not just her in particular, but just really traditional media as a whole. I don't really like, you know, you can you can feel the insecurity and I, a little bit of fear when it comes to traditional media. And I'm not saying that all traditional media is like this. I've run into a lot of traditional media in my time here of covering the Chicago Bears and also covering the Los Angeles Clippers um, as a lot of cool people. So I'm not saying this as a whole. I'm just saying there's some. And I feel like a lot of insecurity comes out when you see us doing our jobs or where we come into these spots and they have that 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 elite is you or how'd you get a credential and just even the nasty things she said about jake and i'm not just saying this just because i fuck with jake that's our guy but just in general i see this a lot you know i know dante you see this a lot with you covering the braves and just the the nastiness that comes with it. and i just want to tell all y'all to in, in the words of dion you know i say i got my my buffs hoodie, hoodie on we coming we coming, bro. Like this is the the new era of sports media. You're gonna have to deal with you know people like me, like Dante, like like Mikey, like Ashley. Ashley's coming on. She's doing her thing. Like a lot of people we have on this show are doing their thing, and they're non traditional media. So you just gotta accept that this is. I don't want to say the end of what you guys are doing because I feel like there always will be some type of space, even if they uh, move over to what we're doing. Um, it's, it's, it's a new era, man. As long as you have guys and women who are coming in and they're respecting the art form, they're out here actually giving informed opinions and actually doing an actual job and not just there for a clout or just to do corny shit. I think you just need to, to, to embrace it and, and to, you know, make moves with these people. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't don't stand in the way, you know, work with these people because, you know, that's what we're trying to do. And if not, especially like a nigga like me, if you ain't trying to work with me, I'm just going to run your ass the fuck over. Like, either way, we, I'm going to get it. Barber chair going to get it. A lot of people going to get it, man. So I'm going to give my goofy mug of the week to people like her and just traditional media who are scared of the future of uh, sports media and everything. Um, that's going on with that. So um, that's all we've got for y'all um, today. This is the longest episode of the show. We 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 clocking on three hours now. 